Well, hi everyone, it's Jane at Velocity Vet 08, and this is <clears throat> the project I have been working on, the finished version of it. Um, and, you know, I know that not everybody watches the process videos, so this might be the first time that any, um, some of you might have seen it. So I'm just going to kind of start at the beginning as to um, what I did with it. This is um, this, I guess you would call this probably birdcage number one, is my guess how Saw has named this. Um, because she's now made a bigger birdcage. And typically when she um, makes a, a second or third of something she's done, she just she numbers them. Um, so this is the small one, and her new one is, is big and doesn't stand on a stand. Um, so this one was made a while back. And I looked it up. Um, it retails right now at this point when this video was made for $4.59. And so it's really, truly a wonderful bargain. And... It goes together so easily. The main thing I just want to mention um, when assembling it, I'm going to give a, a few tips here on basically assembling any of our items. This tip applies. There's always tabs that fit into slots. If you're making a three-dimensional project that Saw made, there's going to be a tab that fits into a slot. So two things. One is if it's not fitting right, flip it over because a lot of times you know flip it around different ways because a lot of times a tab won't be centered and there'll be a short side and a long side and you have to make sure that you have it lined up properly um, it you should never ever have to force anything together that she's made everything falls together literally it just goes together so easily so if you find yourself forcing it you need to move it around in different configurations um, and you'll find it'll it'll come together for you. And the other thing, just the other tip is when you're doing what like what I've done here, where I've painted um, these areas and papered and stuff, make sure and don't paint on the little tabs because there's like you know a tab going in a slot here to fit it together. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see like there's a little tab and. I, I didn't pay I cut the paper there I probably should have left this paper solid but um, the tabs don't get paint or Mod Podge or glue um, you know or paper on them because otherwise then they're not going to fit into your slots very easily and you're either going to have to cut your slots out bigger um, or you're going to have to sand down your tabs or something so I always try to keep my tabs and slots very clean and, and then it just, like said, will fall together um, with no problems. And then the thing I wanted to mention about the birdcage, because um, one of my subscribers was really anxious for me to do this because she was struggling a bit with the, putting the roof together. The roof doesn't have any tabs, and it just sits here. Um, and it, as you can see, there's border around here of uh, this flat platform right here. Well... The easiest way i found to do this is to take your roof pieces, lay them out flat, and put duct tape on them. Um, it'll hold it together, and then the duct tape will end up being on the inside. So then just fold it around to make the formation of a roof, um, and it will you know, form right into the roof shape. And it'll hold together because you've used duct tape on the inside, and no one will ever see it. I used crazy duct tape. I used, um, I used like black, and this is what I used inside there was this crazy duct tape. So no one will see it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, but it will make it strong and hold it together, and then put your glue down, and then just set it down in the glue, and it'll just dry because it's not going to fall anywhere or anything like that because the duct tape is holding it from the inside together. Um, and if you watch um, on the process video, there's a process video for every step of the way. And um, I did this in my process video. So you can go back and look there and see how I put it together if you need more explanation than what I've just given you. But um, I found that it worked super easy. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. So those are just some little tips on putting together Saw's projects. Um, the paper line that I used, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my voice never lasts very long because my mouth gets so dry. Um, the paper line that I used is Kaiser Craft Tea Break. And it's uh, really a very feminine, nice, soft 
um, paper line. I love it. It's great for, you know, just like said, kind of a light, feminine, shabby chic type of coloring. Um, so I used it and just used two different designs. I used the rose one and then that top small print on the roof. Um, and then the in, the rest of it I painted and I, I just sewed it first. And then I painted it just, it's literally like almost a flesh color. It's very, very light. And it goes really good with the, the birds and the paper and everything because it's almost, when it's against those, it almost looks a tad peachy kind of. And so, um, and then what I did also was I sanded it to give it kind of a worn, shabby look. So you can kind of see, I'm trying to see an area that you would be able to see good on the camera. Some of it is not as easy to see on camera, I don't think. But you can see like at the bottom of the door, hopefully how it's bare wood here and bare wood up there. And so I just sanded like it's bare wood right there on that corner. So I just sand it around to different places um, to, um, like it's bare wood here, just to give it that kind of a worn, shabby look. Um, the paint that I used was gloss, and then everything else that I painted, I used a white gloss. And like this little handle is from Saw Store, and I painted it with a white gloss, and then I just sanded it a little bit to give it a little bit worn look. I put little brads in it first, then painted it, and then put it on here after I, you know, it was dry and I had sanded it and everything. And I just thought that looked really cute on there like that. And um, I also took the bird nest that I put inside there, and I painted it with white gloss as well. Not all the way white or anything, but just so that it would, you can kind of see it through there. I wanted it to have just the whole light white, you know, shabby look to it. Um, I also took the birdcage and I, um, before I put it in there, I glued white feathers to the bottom of it so that when you look inside there, you see like white feathers and it just has a real, like I said, kind of a soft feminine kind of look. You can see feathers through there. Um, and I, I said I just wanted to keep it, you know, like real soft looking. I put a few little flowers and kept their stems on them and put a little white paint on them as well around the edges here and same here this is a little metal piece that Saw had given me and I just put some little white pearls on there and um, these little birds I think that I ordered them online from Hobby Lobby either that or Joann's obviously not Michael's um, but it's either Hobby Lobby or Joann's and they come three in a pack and they're all looking in different directions. Like that one's looking that way and then there's one looking just as hard the other way and then this one looks straight forward. Um, so I just didn't use the other one. And then this is a little Prima nest down here. And I don't, I think this came from the same place the birds came from. And it's like a, um, a hair clip and it also had like a brooch clip on it. Um, and I just took all that off the back and put that on here. Um, used a couple different laces that I had up here and then a couple other ones that I had. These were all just from my stash. Um, this one was actually given to me in a rack from um, um, Bex, who is Bex Swanson. She's very sweet and she she had given me a whole bunch of sweet little laces. They were so pretty. And um, so yeah, I just, I. Oh, this is like a little clay piece right here. This is actually a mold from um, this particular one from a charm I got from Lindy Stamp Gang, actually, and molded it up. And I used some of the um, Twinkly and H2Os, and I used um, a yellowish color, and I loved the way that turned out. Um, and then these are just random flowers. Uh, some of them are Wild Orchid Crafts and some of them are from Saw Store. Uh, these, most of these little guys right here are all from Saw Store. And they're just so pretty. And she still has these on sale and they're 40% off. So they're really a great deal. Um, and then uh, same here. Um, these little guys, they're from, from Saw Store. And this was, I think this is a, oh, this is a, Monami Gabby flower that I got from a scrapbooking store near my home, just like an independent store. It's just a small store actually. And then the bird, what I did here, he just had brown tail feathers. 
and I left his little brown tail feathers, but I added some white tail feathers to him, too. <laughs> he had a lot of white in him, so I'm like, I just wanted to have some white kind of spraying over here, so he got a little um, hair transplant there going on. He got a little bonus, little bonus feathers. And then this beautiful um, dragon or dragonfly right here, that's actually from Trezor's Deluxe. And I had been really wanting to make a project where I would use that. It's really a, a really neat dragonfly. And I thought it worked perfect here color-wise and size and everything. So I added that. And then there's three little bird eggs inside there. And those came, again, from the same place as the bird. Um, and then down here... I used, and I did up here as well, and there's a couple places I used tulle, and I just used a real soft pink tulle, and um, I used some of the metal pieces that Saw gave me and painted them white, and then put um, like a lily flower on top. I just stacked it, and I stacked some tulle in there as well, um, layered, it's like metal, tulle, metal, flower, and um, the the biggest metal one right here you can buy in her store and then just another um, butterfly that I painted up and a prima flower back there um, and then over here another one of those flowers that I got at that scrapbooking store and then these are more of saws flowers they're so pretty and these were from wild orchid crafts and um, and then here's another one of the metal pieces that she gave me. It almost looks like a little wheat spray. And I put some little pink pearls on it, little flat back pearls that she had um, given me at Christmas time. And um, and I layered another flower here with another white metal piece. Well, they they weren't white. I painted them all white. Um, so yeah, that is how it all ended up in the end. And I love it. I. I really, to be honest with you, I'm not like a huge birdcage person. Um, you may notice I don't use a lot of them in my projects or anything. Um, I, it's not like I have anything against birds or the birdcage, but um, I just it's just never been something I've messed with much, I guess. And um, I ended up with this birdcage. Um, I don't remember if I bought it or she gave it to me. To be honest, I get... I mean, she gives me so many things, and so I lose track. I mean, there's always a good possibility she gifted this to me, and I was just determined I was going to make this birdcage. And so that was when I started picking up these other pieces so that I could do it. And then I had all the pieces, and my subscriber asked me if I would make it because she wanted to see me do the roof. And um, so I thought, well, you know, now's as good a time as any. So... Um, I went ahead and, and put it together and I just, you know, when you, when something is not like your passion, you wonder if it's going to turn out, you know, to be something that you're really excited about. Um, and in the end, I actually am. I can't wait to put it upstairs. I, it, it, I'm really excited about it. So, and I talked about this in some of my process videos and I'm going to mention it here. I did a lot of details. It took me 10 videos to put this together. Um, and a lot of them were 50 minutes. Some of them were quite long. And so I did a lot of details and um, I, you know, had a lot of fun doing this, but, and made it very elaborate. But my point is, is that it's $4.59. So like I used to have my niece come over and craft with me and um, before she was gone, you know, like, and she's visited, she lives in a different state than me. And, um, you know, she's, you know, made crafts right along with me and, and it's been, you know, loads of fun. And this is something that, you know, even if you had a couple of them, one for you and one for a grandchild that likes to craft along with you, you could do them together, you know, because it doesn't have to be all elaborate and perfect at the end. For $4.59, have one on hand for for, like I said, a grandchild or a niece or nephew that comes over and enjoys spending time with you in their in your craft room and wants to paint and play around. Um, I mean, you know, so this can go from that end of the spectrum to all the way to the end of the spectrum where you make this the most ornate piece in your house. I mean, you know, you can go crazy with it if you want. You know, some people just absolutely love bird cages and would take this to a level much different than this. So that's my point is that it, it can go all the way from one end to the other. And um, so, you know, 
go take a look at what's at in her store because with her prices being so reasonable, it is really fun. I wish that my niece still lived here because I would buy so many things from her store for my niece to come over and play around with, you know, because it would be it would be a lot of fun. And um, you make a lot of memories that way. You really, you really do. You make some great memories. And this is a, a really good item to have in your stash for that rainy day. Um, when, when a grandchild is visiting or, or something of that nature, or if you just love bird cages and you want to make it for yourself like I did this for me. And um, like I said, I'm going to go put it upstairs. But I just, you know, go out and take a look. Her store is so amazing, you guys. She just keeps in creating and inventing new and different things. I mean, she's just brilliant at it, just absolutely brilliant. So anyway, that's what I have for today. And I'm going to... I don't know exactly what I'm going to do next. I want to make a project for Saw. She's done so much for me. And so um, I decided that I'm going to make um, a canvas. Sherdy knows this because she's having to make part of it. <laughs> I um, I want to make a canvas that says friends on it. And I don't have a D or an S or an R in those wooden letters. And so... I ordered those letters, so she has to make the letters so I can make her canvas, the poor woman. And, um, but I at least got her favorite colors out of her and how that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do that, but I can't make it yet until I get the letters from her. And um, um, So I, I think I might end up starting my um, pillow case that I'm going to make, you know, um, for my friend. So I think I might do that next. I don't know. We'll see. But I did want to tell you also, too, I'm going to load a video, um, a little craft room tour update. And I'm going to do it with my camera, my regular camera. So it may not be like having it done with this camera. So um, just so you're aware of that, you know, in case it doesn't have a title and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.